Hello, hello, hello again. Here we are once again to talk about depression and how to kick it in the booty. Because we, we ain't got time for that, do we? No, we want to be happy and loving life. So today's subject I am super excited about. We're talking about mood journaling and being self-aware. Um, I do got some notes. I dug in really deep for you guys and did some research because I just think this is an amazing thing to do to help yourself, especially if you can't afford to be going um, to a therapist, which I, like I said before, is great, but not always possible for everyone. So I think mood journaling is a great, great thing. Okay, so let's go. What's mood journaling? What is it? Well, it's basically what it sounds like. It's a journal. I mean, you could get one like this. I got it from the dollar store. And you write down your moods. You write down, um, you know, the daily things um, that are going on. And later on in the video, we're going to talk about exactly what to write. Why? Why do you want it? What does it do? Okay, so the first thing that it's going to do is help you to prioritize prioritize it helps you to prioritize your fears and your concerns okay the second thing is it helps you to establish what your triggers are and it can help you learn how to better meet them okay quick example maybe you have a trigger that is somebody who every time they say something to you it makes you feel depressed so after writing down in your journal for a week and realizing that every time after uh, your spouse comes home, you start to feel depressed, your spouse is a trigger. Okay, so there's two options with triggers. You can get rid of them and say, bye, bye, bye. Okay, well, if it's your spouse, maybe you don't want to do that. So um, the second thing is to learn how to better react and cope with that trigger. Okay, so the third thing now that the journal is going to do for you is it's going to give you an opportunity for self-talk, positive self-talk. If you watched our previous video, um, which I will link down below just in case you missed it, um, we talked about self-love and saying positive things to yourself daily, okay? Because we need to pour love into ourselves, right? Now, how to do it. Okay, first step is write every day. If you're gonna do this, it only works if you are committed to writing every day, okay? Second step, just write whatever feels right to you. Whatever feels right, just get it on the pen and paper. If there is something that you're feeling like, I need to write this, do it. There's no like specific, special guideline, like you need to do A, B, and C minus F squared, and that is what you must write every day. This is your journal, it's for you. So write down what you want, okay? Just make sure that you are writing down your emotions. If, if um, maybe you had a really, really happy day, write down your day was really happy, the things you did, and if the next day, maybe your day was really depressing, write that and then write down the things that happened that day. So you can start to track, you know, what things make you feel certain ways. Um, and I mean, I know sometimes depression is random and that there's not always a reason, but a lot of times there could be. Next, what you can actually use your journal as as well is a way to express yourself to others. Um, maybe I know from experience it is really hard to like open up and say to your spouse or a friend or whoever, hey, I'm depressed and this is how you're feeling. I remember having huge, huge issues um, telling my partner how I was feeling. So if you have a journal and you would just write down, you know, one day how you're feeling and you you want somebody to know, but you can't find the words and the courage inside of yourself to, to tell them, you can just show them this. Show them what you wrote, and that way you're not alone, and that way they know what you're going through. Um, I find it a very easy way to let others know. Okay, so that is, in a quick glimpse, um, mood journaling, what it does, why you want to do it, and how it's going to help you. Um, I think a few quick things. Just like I said, be sure to do it every day. Be sure to be reflective, to look back on it. Um, you know, a few weeks later, you may see that what was once a trigger for you no longer is. You could see that you learned how to cope with it, or you can see that this is still 
a really big trigger for me and I've been trying to change it but I don't know how and maybe this is something that I need to go and get help with from a professional. Next we're moving on to the second part of this video which is being self-aware, okay? Um, I think when you are depressed it is important to recognize where you are, recognize what you're feeling, um, but also to recognize that you, inside of you right now, have the power to embark change upon your life. A lot of times when we're depressed, we are just laying there, like, I am depressed and I can't do anything. And it's that feeling of helplessness. But once you take the power, once you take the reins and say, I have the power to bring myself out of this feeling and out of the situation, you now are, can be in control. So, I mean, accept where you are, accept that you're depressed, accept that you are in this place, but accept that you are not gonna be here always. You are not built, you are not created to be in this state of sadness. You were created to impact the world and to be happy and to love your life. That is what you deserve and that is what will come to you. Without a doubt in my mind, I know it will come to you. The other part of being self-aware is realizing what things that you can deal with on your own and what things you can't. Um, this is a little personal, but hey, I strive to be absolutely transparent with you guys. Um, things I can deal with on my own for me is like my depression, my feelings of worthlessness, those things I, I can tackle. I have tackled those on my own. Well, I wouldn't really say my own because I had my Lord, I had God who really, really helped me. Um, but one thing that I absolutely, right now I'm feeling like I can't tackle on my own is I am a survivor of sexual assault. And that is something that is proving more difficult for me um, to face on my own. So that is something that I am looking um, outward for help. So recognize there is things that you can do on your own. There is things you can do to make yourself feel better. But there is maybe certain things as you, sorry, there are certain things which maybe you do just need help for. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with needing help, okay? Find out what those things are. Find out the things that you need help on and allow yourself to feel emotions. Allow your emotions to process. What I found is a lot of times when I start to feel sad, I, I'm like, no, I shouldn't feel like this. And I try to run from that feeling. And then by running from that feeling, I just make it bigger and bigger. But when I stop and I'm like, okay, I'm sad. Why am I sad? And I, and I allow the feeling to stay there. Then I start to realize I don't even know why I'm sad. I don't have a reason to be sad. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm not sad. <laughs> right? I'm just, it's okay to not always be like super happy and just, you know, it's okay to be sad sometimes and I think that's another important thing is there's nothing wrong with you because you're sad there's nothing wrong with you because because you're depressed millions of people are depressed every day so there's nothing wrong embrace where you are now in life and look forward to where you're gonna go which is up the only place you can go is up so that wraps up this video on mood journaling and self-awareness i hope you liked it i hope it helped you let me know what you think any comments any maybe you've done maybe you've done mood journaling before well let us know in the comments so we can all help each other to be stronger um don't forget your warrior like this video and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss on the next video which is coming soon